Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to give you a look at my new personal journal. I'm going to start filming some journal with me's and stuff inside this journal. So I wanted to show you what the journal looks like before I do anything inside it. So just a quick size reference. This is my previous journal next to it. So I've gone even bigger. It's both wider and taller than my last journal. I think next time I'll probably go back to a smaller size to change it up again but I wanted to try an even larger size so I took a lot of inspiration from my old journals for this new journal and I kind of took elements that I like from previous journals I specifically took some inspiration from this old journal I don't know if many of you will remember this one but it's from 2017 and obviously these journals are very different but this one really inspired me when I was making this one. So this one is a similar size, it's a little bit bigger, and I have made the cover again out of craft tech. I kind of needed to throw a journal together for myself pretty quickly. And I also wanted to experiment with a few different ideas that I haven't tried before. So some of those ideas worked out well, some of them I had to change along the way, and I did run into a few little issues and difficulties when I was making this cover. But because this is my own personal journal, I'm not too worried about those little errors. You can probably tell just by looking at the journal. It's really quite messy, the cover. So the stitching especially is quite messy and especially the circle stitching around this focal image. And that is just because when I was sewing this, I kind of didn't take into account how large the cover was and it was really, really hard to fit it inside my machines. So I ran into a bit of trouble when I was trying to sew this in a nice circle shape. It's quite wonky. And I also ran into a few issues with just how thick the cover became and I was still trying to sew into it and my sewing machine was having quite a bit of trouble in some areas. And the journal cover is quite imperfect but because it's just me, I'm happy just to run with this. This is the back cover and as you can see I've painted it sort of like a mustard brown sort of colour. My favourite part is probably the way the spine turned out. So this is where I was doing some experimenting. And like I said, some things worked out, some things didn't, some things I had to change. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how the spine turned out. I ended up needing to do lots more holes in my binding. I usually just do like a three hole binding. For this one, I actually did six. So lots more stitching and it has 10 signatures because I made the width of this spine three inches wide. I wanted to go wider than I did last time because I kind of started to run out of room towards the end. So I wanted to make sure I left extra room. And as you can see, the cover is like able to squeeze together. So that means there is a lot of growing room that I can do with this cover. And actually because this spine has a curve to it, when it becomes more full, it can sort of even expand and flatten out to give me more room. So I'm hoping this journal will take me through maybe to end of this year or more. So yes, it's a craft text cover with lots of layers of craft text. And there's also some fabric and trims and stuff. And I've added eyelets to the front and back covers so that I could tie some ribbon through. And then this can tie as a closure. And then on the spine, I did my usual charms. So beads and buttons and charms. A lot of these beads I actually found at an op shop or a thrift store. I got these little containers full of full of beads, which I assume they took from old jewelry. And there was some really pretty pieces. So I included lots of those. I also included a few little charms here and there. And then this big bead here, it's like a big fish. I actually got this a few years ago from my auntie for Christmas. So I think it was like a little handmade bead, which is really cool. So those are the charms. And then the cover itself measures over, just over seven and a half inches wide by about 11 inches tall. So it's a really big journal, really, really decent size. And usually when I make a journal, the covers are easily my favorite part. I'm usually the most confident and the most happy with the outside cover. But this time I'm actually, it's probably the opposite. I'm really, really happy with the inside of this journal, which makes me really excited to fill it up. I do still love the outside, but it's not quite 100% what I planned and what I pictured. I'm still happy with it, but the insides of this journal for me are what I'm really excited about. So, so on the front and back cover, I lined it with this beautiful mushroom paper from Craft Consulting. So these are beautiful hand-painted designs by Claire Therese Gray. And I think the paper pad that this paper is from is called In the Forest. A lot of the papers in here are from Craft Consortium 
and designed by Claire Therese Gray. So you will see those as I flick through, but I've also included some craft paper. So this really nice craft paper with a really subtle ribbed pattern into it. So this is some more of that beautiful craft consortium paper, double-sided. And I also added in here a couple of vintage hankies or linens. So I just sewed them in as if they were a page. And that was another little bit of inspiration that I got from this old journal. So in here, I also had a couple of different vintage linens, which I just added in as a page. So they just were a part of the signature when I bound the book. There's a few of those throughout here and I just wanted to bring that idea back for this journal. So you'll see a couple of those as we flick through. I've also included some book pages and this is a book page which at the moment it flips up but I could always glue it down onto other sides and make it a pocket or I could glue it straight down onto the page. Just depends what I journal on that page. Just zoom you in a little bit more. Some more beautiful patterned paper, more craft paper. And believe it or not, I did try to be quite selective with the pages that I included in here. I wanted it to be more on the plain side as well. I was planning on having lots of craft papers. But when I go through my stash of favorite patterned papers, I always tend to go a little bit crazy with them because I just love scrapbook paper. Quite obsessed with paper, of course. So it's really hard not to include a lot of beautiful papers. This one is from Market Square. And you'll notice a lot of the pages are quite narrow compared to the actual size of the book. And that's just because the book is so large that I had to fold that I had to fold a lot of these pages off center. So this is a 12 by 12 paper, for example, you can see it there. And I folded it instead of folding it down the middle to give me two six by six inch pages. I just folded it off center. So I'll have one that's quite large like this, and then I'll have one that's more narrow. So that's typically what I will do whenever I make a larger size journal. I'll just fold pages off center and that gives me a nice variety of shorter pages and wider pages. But it's always really easy to extend any page in your journal. If I wanted this to come out more, I could always just get another piece of paper and I could glue it down onto this page and I could make it sit around here and make it a full size page. So I've actually done a couple of those towards the back of the book and I'll show you what I mean. When we come to that, this is a little pocket page here. This is from the Sunny Days paper pad. And then this is a fold out. Then I took the cover of this reading workbook. It's a vintage reading workbook. I used that in here. So here I made it like a full size page and just attached it to this shorter page. So it's a bit of a pocket in there. And then there's another little tuck pocket down the bottom. Here's another beautiful hanky. So it's just in as a page. And you'll notice as well that pretty much all the papers that I included in here give a bit of a forest sort of vibe. Like there's lots of nature, lots of animals and stuff like that. So again, kind of like a foresty fairy tale sort of vibe in this journal, which I really, really like. These bears. Oh, they're so cute. Let me show you up close. Seriously, the cutest. I think this would have to be one of my favorite scrapbook paper collections ever. Um, I did use two different pads though. So if you want to know exactly what those are, stick around to the end of the video and I'll just show you what paper pads I used. So more beautiful patterned papers. This is another example of a full sized paper, which I folded directly in half. So that gave me two six by six sides. So you can see it doesn't quite reach to the edge. It's like a full size page would. It just gives me shorter pages. It's a little pocket down the bottom there. This is one from Market Square, I believe. And I just made that a little tuck pocket there. And then more book pages, really, really pretty. There's the other side of that. And then here is another fold out page and another little tuck pocket there. This is also from the Market Square collection. So I really liked the papers that had the horses on them. I, I thought those were really, really pretty. So I included some of those. And just more of the same thing. This is just another like vintage handkerchief or napkin, which I've just used as a page. 
And then there is the other side of it there. And then with the other side of that workbook cover, I folded it over the edge of this page. This created a little tuck pocket. And then when you flip it over, it, it is also a fold out page. Beautiful owls on that paper. And then I really love this sort of tree pattern paper here. And I just attached this mushroom image again as like a fold out for now, but I can always create a pocket or something with that. We'll tuck look at there. Just more of the same stuff. So, so whenever I'm making my own journals, I always just pick papers that really, really speak to me, papers that I really love to look at, and papers that make me feel inspired so that when I sit down to journal in here, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to open a page, and there's already going to be something on the page that makes me go, wow, that is so pretty. What can I team with that? And I use these base pages to give me that little bit of inspiration to build upon the page. So whenever I'm journaling, that always makes me feel really inspired. So choosing papers that you really, really love when you're making sort of a junk journal style journal, that's definitely key to being inspired and staying inspired. So when I flick through here, I'll just see pages that are, to me, really, really beautiful and it's gonna make me wanna journal. So there's another fabric page there. Just more of the same stuff. So getting towards the back. So this is the pocket here. This is also from the Sunny Days collection. So here are a couple of examples of extending pages. So this was just a short book page and on the back of it, it was just text. So on the back of it, I actually attached this, this big, it's actually an old greeting card. So I cut out the image that was in the middle and then I attached this onto the back of this page. I use this craft tape, which I actually got from the dollar store here. And you can open this out. I can then go ahead and add a photo or something in here later on, or I could do some journaling and have like a little window. But you can see that if I didn't add this, this would just be a little short page. So adding this extended this page, I can build up on top of this. And it's given me a nice full size page to work with. I've also done the same thing on this side. So this was again, just another book page, which was ending about here. And on the back of that, I added this beautiful page. This is like a cover of a booklet. This is something that my friend Kaylee sent me a while ago and I've just been kind of hoarding it, but it did rip down the fold. So I decided to include the front of that in here. Super pretty. And I feel like this imagery goes with the rest of the images in this journal. But this is obviously a really old vintage booklet cover of some kind, if anyone knows what this says. Feel free to leave that in the comments, but it's just got this beautiful texture because it's kind of embossed. So I wanted to include that as well. But yes, that's given me a wider page than what I originally had here. Obviously, if you do this to every single page in the journal, it's going to become quite bulky. You do need to be mindful of that, but that's a very easy way to make your pages bigger than what they are. And just flicking through, here's one more page that I extended. So again, just glued it onto a shorter page. And then this one also. So when I was putting the signatures together, I didn't really notice that the last signature in the book had a whole heap of short pages and pretty much no full-sized pages. So I wanted to make it a bit more balanced and I just glued in some larger pieces of paper so that I could do that. Here are the last few pages and there is the back. So yes, that is my new personal journal. Again, absolutely love how the pages turned out. I'm really, really excited to start journaling in here now. I really do like how some of the cover elements turned out, so especially the spine. I really do love how this turned out and I think this is something that I will revisit. So possibly in a journal collection I'll redo something like this with the spine. I forgot to mention that this is a decal. So just a really cute little deer on the bottom there, which goes with the overall theme of this journal. Now, for those of you that wanted to see the paper pads that I included, I just give you a quick peek at these so you can find them yourself. When I say Claire Therese, this is who I'm talking about. She paints the most beautiful designs. Seriously, everything that she makes is gorgeous. So this is one of her paper pads. It's called In the Forest, and that's a collaboration with Craft Consortium. So I think I use papers, pretty much every paper from this paper pad in my journal. And the cool thing about Craft Consortium paper pads is they always come with a selection of like little cut apart elements in the covers. So you can really utilize the front and back covers of these. So it's like a card stock with 
beautiful images from the paper collection. So I used In the Forest and I also used this one which is called Woodland and these two paper pads go together perfectly. Seriously, it's hard to tell which ones came from which because they're all the same sort of theme. And again, of course, by Cletcherie's Grey. And I'll give you a quick flick at these ones. So beautiful mushrooms and deers and owls. So, so beautiful. So I included papers from both of these. I also included a lot of these papers in my recent journal collection as well. So there's those two. And then I've shared this one before. It's also designed by Claire Therese Gray. And this one's called Farm Meadow. The only one I think I used in this particular journal is the is the chickens. So these chickens here. I just love them. This is one of my favorite papers. So I included some of that, but the rest of them not in this journal, just because I felt like that went in a bit of a different direction. But you would have seen these papers in my previous journals. So they're equally as beautiful and I would highly, highly recommend these paper pads if you like the look of them. This is not sponsored or anything. I just wanted to include this because I'm always seeming to mention them lately. So if you're wondering what those are, these are what they are. You can Google them to find them wherever you are in the world. So yes, this is my new journal, my new flip through. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And hopefully I'll be back really soon with a journal with me in this journal. Really, really looking forward to that. I hope you guys are all doing really well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.